What do you think about dreams specifically? Do you think that's part of the executive functioning? Do you think that's part of an element of maybe some of the memory stuff going on? Do you think it's maybe a state of uh, a restorative state? What do you think that is? So as far as we know, which is very, very little about dreams, it's, you know, it's a really amazingly interesting and it's been fascinating humans. Our whole, you know, the history of humans, we've been looking at our dreams and trying to understand what the hell's going on. And there's every possible, you know, hypothesis about what dreams are for. Um, so the research that me and my colleagues have, have done on those are really trying to stick in the stay in the realm of cognition. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're finding is that uh, um, this is work by Aaron Wamsley um, is that it's likely that when you're dreaming about something, it's part of the memory consolidation process, right. right? That it is some sort of reflection of a reactivation of your memories. Um, because what she's shown is that when people dream about, say, walking through a maze, that they were, they, you know, doing a virtual maze on a computer game, and then when they dream about those mazes, they do better on, on, on the maze when they wake up. So that's number one. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. It's really that's cool. That's not just a number one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So they, they'll train in a virtual maze mm -hmm. when they're awake, dream about the maze, mm -hmm. and then do better when they're tested the on the maze the next day. The about the maze were the ones who did better. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. What's number two? Number two is that there's this idea that we may also be doing some emotional processing mm -hmm. um, because dreams are highly emotional mm -hmm. and we are when we're in a REM brain state, our frontal lobe is actually pretty much shut down, mm -hmm. right? So we're in this kind of highly emotional, really motivated, intense... Disinhibited. Um, yeah. Disinhibited state where we are going through all these different memories and there's a lot of random firing in the brain and you're kind of bringing up things that recently happened with things that happened a long time ago, right. like dreaming about dead people interacting mm -hmm. with live people mm -hmm. and very nonlinear and non-logical. But somehow, as we said, those things that happened during that period may also be help helping us with creativity, right? So we're, so we're making connections that we wouldn't otherwise make during waking because during waking, we have a system that says, that's dumb. Right. She's dead. There's right. no way she'd be playing cards right. with this guy you just met, right? Like right. it doesn't make any sense. So, but in dream time, we can actually experience that fanciful thing. And, you know, maybe there's some idea that we are sort of troubleshooting or, or working out potential hypothesis, hypothesis testing. Yeah. You know, like, well, what, ha what would happen if this happened? Well, what, you know, how would I feel about this? Or, you know, kind of looping through situations over and over again to see. Um, to try to figure them out. Um, the other idea is that across uh, many bouts of REM sleep, what you're doing is every time you reinstate that memory, you're having a less and less and less of an emotional response to it because you're disengaging the amygdala from that memory. So you're leaving the memory there as a core memory, but less and less emotional tone is, is associated with that memory. Um, and that may also be happening. And, you know, and, and so, so there's a lot of different ideas around, but we don't have, we don't have any answers so, in the same way that we have answers for non-REM sleep. So disengaging the emotional tone to an experience sounds very therapeutic. Yeah. Um, have you been finding that throughout sleep and throughout the stages of sleep where you find that REM becomes more and more prominent? that emotional tone decreases? Yeah. And if so, how do you how do you find how do you see that? So you'll show people emotional things, like emotional experiences that they're supposed to emotional pictures, mm -hmm. emotional movies or something, and, and then emotional stories. Um, and you have them rate how they feel about them. Mm -hmm. um, and later then you test them on their memory for the in information and then also how they feel about them. Mm -hmm. And what you sometimes find is that their memory gets stronger when their emotional feelings get less intense. After you know that they've dreamed about it in their sleep. That's the part that we don't really know about. We just know that after they sleep, that's that seems to be the outcome. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. 
I hate to tie this in, but it sounds very similar to some of the therapeutic effects of psychedelics. Yeah. You know? Oh, I think psychedelics have a huge potential yeah. that are really, really interesting. Yeah, it's very striking. Yeah. That's a rabbit hole that we can't go down because <laughs> we only have like 10 minutes left in this thing. 